Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the Softkey Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description listing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 201. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. First up, the Great Code Holio has dug up DOS games backslash adventure backslash crusher211. I'm gonna guess something called Crusher. Um, well, <laughs> yeah, Crush and Crusher and also Sawsoft. Wait a minute. Isn't there like a solo software game called Crusher? In fact, didn't I cover a game called Crusher on Ancient DOS games? Hmm. Um, let's just see here for a second. Um, Crusher Castle 2. Wait a minute, 2? If I'm remembering right, if I'd covered a Crusher Castle on Ancient DOS games, it would have been the first one, not the second one. So maybe this'll be different? Hmm. Although knowing Solo Software, it's probably gonna be like exactly the same, just updated to some degree. Um, so it looks like it's just Crusher 2. Yep, Solo Software, that's what we were expecting. Presents. Welcome to Crusher Castle 2. You have somehow found yourself locked in a haunted castle and must find your way out. There are 25 rooms which have ghosts who will stop at nothing to prevent your escape. First objective is to gather 10,000 points. Points are awarded for gold, candles, bombs, and trapping ghosts in the boxes. When you've reached the first hurdle of 10,000 points, a special mesh... Mesh... I can't... So okay, so this is a little... A little interesting trivia about when I'm doing any kind of, like speaking to the camera or voice work or something, I actually have trouble with the word message. <laughs> I don't know why. It's like every time I try to pronounce message, like without stopping first to like really focus on it, it almost never comes out right. And it's also saying here, remember, never run out of candles or the game will be over even if you still have some lives left. Wait a minute. <laughs> it never run out of can... I didn't read that as it was on screen. Let me try that again. Never run out of candles, or the game will be over even if you still have some lives you left. Yeah, that's a typo. Okay, let's see this thing. Okay, so so far this looks... Whoa, everything seems like it's moving a little fast. Maybe I should turn the cycles down. Okay, I've got the cycles turned down, but it still seems like it's moving pretty quickly. I'm not sure what the logic is in terms of how often the ghosts are able to move, but... And I'm not even sure if, like, there's a... I don't think they can move diagonal, because that ghost doesn't seem to be going anywhere. So there does seem to be a sort of mechanic going on where you can trap the ghosts, but... Like... Come on. There we go. And that gets me a candle. Okay. So yeah, this is playing... If I'm remembering correctly, this is playing pretty similarly to... The original Crusher Castle. Although it's definitely got a different theme going on. Because I don't remember the exact specifics, but the original Crusher Castle, I think, had something to do with, like... Something to do with oxygen or something. I might be thinking of a different slow game. Okay, so if I want to drop a bomb, that would be what button? Spacebar? Oh, maybe not. Uh... Oh, bomb activated. And you push the direction. Okay, I get it now. It's saying I'm running low on candles. I don't like that. <laughs> running low on candles is probably not a good thing. Oh. And the ghost just got me. You have two lives left. See, I don't think I'm going to spend too long with this because this is playing very similarly to the original Crusher Castle. There's definitely some aesthetic differences. But overall, it does seem to be pretty much the same game. Which, you know, it's kind of par for the course for how Solo Software did their stuff. 
is they often did release sequels that were just minor updates to their original games just to make them just slightly better in some way or slightly different. So it kind of doesn't surprise me that Crusher Castle 2 is very similar to the original Crusher Castle. But yeah, otherwise this is playing perfectly fine. Next up, Matthew Belshans dug up DOS games backslash cards backslash great WHT. This either means great white or great wheat. <laughs> and that doesn't help. It's great something. Uh, I got a door dot bath, which would suggest a BBS thing. Okay. Uh, I got setup.com. Got the main executable. Support.txt, readme.first. So let's do readme first. What do we've got here? The Great White Card Game. Apparently copyright 8992 by Janus Software. Upgrading from previous versions. Have to start from scratch. Not surprising. Please take time to read the doc file. Game does not require any other runtime modules to operate. Why would you say something like that? Most games don't require modules. Oh yeah, it does look like it's BBS software, because it's saying right here, thanks for using my great white card game live door game. So that definitely suggests that this is supposed to be meant for use on a BBS. So whether that actually works for us right here and now, I have no idea. But let's see what we got. There was a, supposed to be a doc file? Okay. Ooh, I got a bad feeling about this. Okay, so apparently the way this is licensed out to run this locally, there is a way to like there is a way to run it on a local system. But I'm seeing this section here that it says that to run as an evaluation demo requires that you to call one of the support BBSs listed in order to get the actual like key file to run it. And since the keys are designed to expire after 30 days, this might be a problem. Um, let's just quickly test. So if I try to run it... Okay, so this is just a setup program. Yeah, if I try to run it, it's just lo loading the... Um, like, it says it's saving a configuration file, but it doesn't seem to actually go anywhere. Like I could run, try running door.bat. Okay, I see how this is working. So it looks like that door.bat file was the was a way to get into here. So it's saying that because there's no key, it's limited only to local mode, meaning it can't be run as a door on a BBS. Gotcha. So we are actually going to be able to try this. That's good. So the Great White, white Card Game by Rusty Johnson. Great White Card Game, play a great... Play the game, view scores, view instructions. Gonna need the instructions here. Game that's played in two different parts. Part one consists of seven rounds. The player is shown six cards. All but one is face down, and it is the starter card. The left of the starter card is a change card, and all the cards to the right are play cards. You try to guess rather the next card to the right will be lower or higher. Okay. You have one change card per round to exchange on one card. You guess each card correct per round, you win 100 points. Okay, so it seems like it's a very basic game. I don't know how well it's going to play solo, given that this is supposed to be like a BBS door game. But let's see here. So... Don't exactly know like how to set up the game or anything. We don't seem to have a name, <laughs> because it's probably looking for like a login name or, so or something. So is the next card lower or higher? Um, well, with a seven, that's a kind of a tricky one. I'm gonna say higher. Nope, we're wrong. So shuffling, lower or higher? I'm gonna say higher. <laughs> nope, still wrong. Watch, it gives me like a three in it. So, yeah, I'm gonna say higher, and it's probably gonna be like a three or a two. Oh no, I got it right. <laughs> um, next card. So now if I wanted to actually change it, so I could hit like C to change. Okay, and that swaps the card out. And now, yeah, lower than a jack. There we go. And higher than a six, you know, or not. <laughs> so there doesn't seem to be a lot to this. 
Like it's not a it's not a multiplayer game, but like I mean it still has um, functions to go into a chat window, which obviously is not going to go anywhere because this is not <laughs> connected to anything. But yeah, so this really is as basic a game as it looks. You just pick whether. I accidentally pit lower there instead of higher, and that somehow actually worked. <laughs> now I got the two. Wow, what is with this randomization? So yeah, this does seem to be a pretty basic game on the surface. Okay, so I actually finally won a round. Well, it doesn't seem to be... Oh, it says right there, play account, 100. Okay. So now I'm not sure how that factors into anything, like, because there's a play account and a bank account, like, I'm not entirely certain how it's figuring this all out, but... But yeah, you never know what you're getting yourself into with BBS software. Oh, that's interesting. If the cards tie, it actually isn't a loss or anything. Huh. But yeah, you never know what you're getting yourself into with BBS software because it could run perfectly fine or it may require all kinds of extra configuration to get it to work right just because of the nature of how BBS has worked, right? So it's always interesting when something like this comes up. And it's interesting here in just the sense that we can actually play it even though it was designed to interface with a BBS in more complex ways. So that's cool. Oh, wait a minute. Here's that super round I was talking about. So, I can't bring the help up at the moment. Let's just bet it all, 100. So, go to the help here for a second. Part 2, 15 cards are dealt face down in 3 rows. The bottom and middle row contain 5 play cards and 1 change card. The top row containing 2 play cards and 1 change card. The first play card in the bottom row is the starting card. In Super Round, the game is played like in Part 1, except you use the money from Part 1 to bet with each guess. Hmm... And also, the last card in each row is moved to the first position of the next row. Okay. Oh, and it's explaining the play and bank accounts here. The play account is set at zero each time you enter the game, and is where your account for the day will be displayed during play. Bank account is where your daily earnings are stored, and is kept for the entire month. Money in the bank account is saved till the top row of the super round, where the two accounts are added together, and you must bet at least half of the combined accounts. Okay, that's kind of weird. Uh, let's just take a stab at it and say lower. Okay, we got it right there. Oh, with a two, we're waging, wagering the whole 250 and saying higher. And now we'll say 200 for lower. Okay, so we actually got a full row there. So enter wager, I'm going to say 500 and higher. Ooh, a seven. Can we actually change cards? Okay, so we had to put the C into the Enter Wager box. Well, that didn't give us much a much better card. Um, I'm just going to say 50. Say higher. Okay. Uh, another 50 and lower. Ooh, that's a pretty good one. Let's say 500 higher. Yeah, we're deaf. Must wager at least half of score. So it automatically put in a 900, but I'm going to do the C there. So yeah, 500's, uh, 5 is better than the 7 there. I'm going to say higher, and we're correct. So I guess that's the end of the game. So view scoreboard. So yeah, 2,700 points there. And that booted us back. <laughs> Which kind of makes sense, because that, that's the whole theory behind door software, is you're opening the door in the BBS, and you're doing some stuff, and then you're closing the door. Although that's interesting. It's actually still resident in memory from the looks of it. Unless it's just... Oh no, it just had failed to clear the screen. It's It closed itself. <laughs> oh, and that's the other thing about BBS software. It says right here, this game may only be played once a day. You've played today and used all extra days. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of BBS software is actually designed with usage limits so that players are not constantly taking up, like, the phone lines and everything. So that kind of makes sense. But yeah, that was the Great White Card Game. Plays fine. Very simple for what it is. And I think I saw it was a $5 registration fee, so that's not so bad either. So, yeah.
actual BBS software we could run for once. And our last dig for today from JP Ronnie is win games backslash new win backslash Ouija. Part of me feels like this is going to be nothing more than a Ouija board on the screen that does literally nothing. But let's see. Well, <laughs> the file ID dot does, does simply says Ouija board for Windows. That doesn't give us a lot to go on. Okay, the help file at least has some extra info, apparently made by uh, Scott Gifford. So, introduction. Ouija boards are different things to different people. To some, they are simply games. Fun to play with, but with n no, or no way. <laughs> I need to, I need to read ahead better here. To some, they are simply games, fun to play with, but with no serious value. To others, they are a device for contacting spirits. To still others, they are an instrument of the devil. This board is no different. <laughs> I think you might want to rephrase that. Oh, well, hey, it turns out that that thing that you hold when you're using an Ouija board actually has a name to it. The planchette, if I'm pronouncing that right. Now, apparently this is how it looks like in this digital version. Okay. Okay, so it does actually ha look like it has, like, a thing for actually selecting the letters that you highlight, so it's not just the board, <laughs> so it's more than that. Although I'm s scared to see what the registration fee is. Um, okay, only $5. That's For something that's going to be incredibly simple and basic, that's fair. But let's see how this actually works. So, got the thing there. Okay. So as usual, does it maximize? <laughs> that's a big no. <laughs> well, that's a neat, it's kind of a neat effect that's going on there. The way it's, um, the way it's capturing stuff as it's trying to like, because it's getting trapped inside that sort of middle section that's being cut out, just the way it's being rendered. Which kind of makes sense. To actually do a shape like this would be a little weird with standard Windows API stuff. But yeah, as long as we don't maximize it, we're fine. And then we can highlight all the different things on here. So yeah, it's a very basic board from the looks of it. So it's only got basic letters, numbers, and yes and no. With some board, also a good buy for some reason. But yeah, on some boards you'd also have like true and false or other things as well, but this seems pretty basic. Okay, and so we can load up a transcript of what we've typed out so far, and then apparently we can save our transcripts and everything, so that's probably good. You can change the font. Um, so I mean, we could do it in system font, <laughs> which kind of doesn't look right. Okay, I was using Arial font at first from the looks of it. I don't even know what fonts are installed in here. We could do Wingdings. <laughs> we could be like Gaster. So yeah, this is just a basic Ouija board thing. So we could say something like, I don't know, um, Death B comes you six 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 <laughs> just for good measure and yeah picking the goodbye option doesn't seem to really do much other than put goodbye into the window here so yeah i'm not really sure what more to say about this thing it's just a basic ouija board thing and oh that was I accidentally hit the right mouse button and um, it's not moving the thing anymore. Oh, I just hit the right mouse button again and it works again. Okay, that's interesting. But yeah, it's just a basic Ouija board thing. I don't really know what more to say about it, other than the fact that it works.